my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to do the second book in the Dublin Murder Squad series, The Like This by Tana French. You'll recall that the first book I loved, and I went into this quite quickly, especially for me. I don't generally tend to just pick up a full series and read it. Sometimes it happens, but even if I like the book by the author, generally I give it some breathing and I kind of have a mixtape approach to uh, what I read. But I just springboarded right into this almost right after because the first book was so dang good. The first one is solely narrated from the perspective of Rob, and this one is solely narrated from the perspe uh, perspective of Cassie, who was the partner to Rob and the primary sort of like uh, relationship that he had in that book, basically, because they were partners. Um, in this book, it takes place five months after the first one, and she is called to a very mysterious uh, murder crime scene where it is a different small town, and in a cottage there's the body of a dead young woman, and not only does this person look exactly like Cassie, more or less, uh, she is using the ID that she created when she was undercover, which is um, somewhat touched on in the first book, but not really. Her old boss, Frank, used to um, run her as a CI or undercover agent, and they completely created this ID from scratch. He was the one that put it into like the system and made it a thing. They didn't adapt it from a different person. It's a wholly different ID. So the question as to how she got a hold of it and was even able to like take on this identity is a question. And it raises others such as is the person like a con person or a hermit crab or like a different wing, um, different governmental agency using the ID for some reason, who knows? But a uh, wild idea is proposed in which Cassie could take on the identity of the person because she looks exactly like them. She's very familiar with the backstory, having created it herself. And so she takes on the life of this college student who is very much like a I guess you could say outsider in an in-group, um, kind of. So there's these four students who is kind of like uh, the secret history, basically. If you've read that book, the dynamics there in play with the group are, I wouldn't say exactly the same, but very similar. They all have very distinct personalities. There's like an alpha guy who runs the place, <laughs> basically, and it's found family very much so. Um, there is some queer themes and queer characters, and uh, Cassie has to insinuate herself as Lexi into this group and find out if they're the ones that killed her or in just investigate what was happening in general. The group owns a large mansion in a small town, uh, so class becomes a very big uh, theme in this book. And though Lexi, the person who died, is a member of this very tight-knit group and seems to have been assimilating well. There's definitely an element of her being on the peripheral and the inside as mentioned, so there's a lot that needs to be found out and a lot for Cassie to tackle as an undercover person because they're very private, uh, they're very like exclusive, they're um, very learned people, like they are somewhat elitist in some ways, especially when it comes to like literature and general, I don't know, how they compare themselves to the town people basically. Um, and there's some tensions because the house was inherited by sort of like the alpha friend guy. And it turns out that the history of the town uh, has some dark secrets there as well. So, there's some tension between the house and the regular townspeople. There's the actual murder at play. And then there's Cassie's sort of underlying plot of just trying to figure out how to interact with the people. Like, she even has to figure out what kind of foods Lexi does and does not like. The very specific interactions that telegraph uh, what the dynamics between each person is in a group setting or in a 
more tight-knit thing is. Um, so it, I found it really fascinating. It is slow going. It again, just like the first book, doesn't care anything about genre conventions with plot or uh, structure. Again, it doesn't really care about uh, doling out clues in a steady manner. There's no frenetic pacing. Uh, it's not noir-esque, nor is it Scandinavian noir transplanted in Ireland like the first book is. It is, again, kind of its own thing. And again, I absolutely loved it. It is very methodical in building Cassie's voice. And initially I disliked that it's not so um, standout or popish or vivid, I guess, as Rob's voice was, but it definitely starts to come out more so and it becomes more interesting as Cassie and Lexi sort of blur together. Uh, Cassie has a fair amount of trauma that she is uh, tr not really even trying to process. She's just kind of masking the symptoms and going on with her day to day. And then as a sort of coping mechanism, she takes on this assignment that sort of starts subsuming her identity, which may be a trope for the genre in which this is situated but again Tana French just puts in so much detail and meat to the story that it doesn't really matter it feels fully fleshed out and it feels like it even has more weight than most stories and not even tropey because we have of the history of the first book and there's so much build up to her even taking the assignment deliberating on it uh, ruminating about where she's at mentally, uh, the past between Frank and her and um, the situation with her identity, Lexi, not the one who died, but the one she had posed as and why she um, got out of the underground uh, sort of uh, drug ring type situation that she was in when she insinuated herself originally as this ID and then went to the murder squad. So again, there's this sort of masterful uh, plot lines that directly coincide and there's just so much um, atmosphere and the found family element again is in the friend group and once again, uh, much like the first one, these people all have secrets and the narration or the, the plot beats sort of circle these secrets and you eventually get to uncover them and again things click into place with their motivations and some of the weird things that they have done or said and previously come into context there's a lot of reveals that feel significant that if they were not handled would be sort of perfunctory feeling in other genre fiction it wouldn't be the uh, central tension of the narrative but here she's managed to make it as important as who the killer is. And the investigation is just so fascinating, but more so is Cassie's identity and what happens with all of that stuff. All of the things in the first book that may have prompted you to wonder what Cassie is like is in this book. Uh, so it's very fascinating to have all of the questions raised about Cassie, like why is she doing X thing, what is she thinking during this moment, uh, be addressed in this book. But also, if you know the first book, there's a little bit of a cliffhanger too, in which Rob and Cassie have a um, conversation, and you wonder if it will appear in this book, because it kind of seems time-wise um, that it might appear in the book and might give a very meaningful perspective through Cassie as to what that conversation means or, or may mean going forward or just be kind of interesting. So yeah, again, I gave this five stars. I thought it was excellent. I will definitely be reading more in the series and uh, hope that the uh, excellence continues. I think this one is definitely situated more so in the commercial upmarket fiction thing. But again, I really like that French is subverting a whole bunch of genre expectations and seems to get away with it with flying colors. Most people seem to really like her work, even though she's basically flouting all of the things that people pick up these books for. Again, if you wanna talk about this book or the first book, 
feel free to comment, but mark your posts and spoilers. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me. And otherwise, I will speak to you next video. Bye.